Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to discuss about root locus approach to control system design. Here we are going to discuss about lead lag and lag lead compensators which are used in root locus. Right. So the desired behavior of a root locus is always expressed in terms of transient response and steady state error. That is the behavior or the performance of a root locus is always expressed in terms of these two terms transient response and steady state error. What is mean by transient response? We are giving input to a system and we are getting steady state output after some particular time. Either it may be in milliseconds or in microseconds, right? But there is a time gap between the input and getting output. So, the response of the system during that time period, that is before giving the steady state output, what is the condition of the system is known as transient response. That is known as transient response. During this transient response, what are all the things that will happen? That is, what are all the parameters? There will be rise time, peak time, peak overshoot, settling time, etc, etc, right? So, that type of response is known as transient response. That is, in other words, the response of the system before it gives the steady state output or the condition of the system before it gives the steady state output is known as transient response, right? And steady state error. What is meant by steady state error here? Again, let's say, consider the same system. We are giving input. We are getting steady state output. That is, the final value of output is reached here. For example, the expected output from the system is 7 volt. But here, we are getting 6 volt, right? So, what is the difference here? Here, the difference is 1 volt, right? So, here, in this example, this 1 volt is considered as a steady state error, okay? The error which occurs during the steady state. That is the difference between the expected value and the actual output is known as steady state error. And this steady state error is expressed in terms of error constants, right? What are all the different types of error constants? Basically, error constants are classified into static error constants, right? They are classified into static and dynamic. And again, static is broadly classified into position, velocity and acceleration. And dynamic, we will be having uh, C0, C1 and C2, right? Then, to meet the specifications, right to meet the criteria so the root locus root loci are reshaped okay we are that is the shape of the root loci gets modified so that they pass through the points where dominant closed loop poles are located that is we are making the root locus to pass through the dominant poles why we are doing that in order to meet the criteria or in order to meet the design specification right so what are we doing we are placing a compensator. So, a compensator reshapes the root locus. Yes, a compensator, it modifies the shapes of a root locus. Then, a compensator will add a pole or a zero in the open loop transfer function. So, compensator is a device which makes the system to produce the desired output, right? So, a compensator will have a pole zero or both in some cases, right? So, what happens if we add a pole and if we add a zero? So, we all know that just for example, consider this root locus, right? So, a root locus is always said to be stable when it lies on the left half of S-plane, right? So, this is our S-plane and this is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis. So, when the root locus lies on the left side, the root locus is mostly stable, right? But when it moves to the right side, then it is said to be unstable. Okay, this is a normal condition. So, what happens if we add a pole? It pulls the root locus to the right. Whenever the root locus is pulled to the right, what happens? The stability gets reduced and it increases the settling time, okay? Settling time is... Um, the time taken to reach the steady state output is the settling time, right? So, stability is increased, sorry, stability is decreased and settling time is increased. Here, addition of zero. So, if we add a zero, what happens? Here, the root locus is pulled to the left. That is, we are again shifting the root locus to the left. 
So what happens? This makes the system more stable and this reduces the settling time. Right, the settling time gets drastically reduced. So which one is more beneficiary? Adding a pole or a zero? Here, based on this difference, adding a zero is good, but it depends upon the uh, condition of the root locus. That is, it depends upon the open loop transfer function of the root locus. Okay, which one is more suitable? Either adding a pole or a zero. And the next one is when a system has undesirable transient response, then lead compensator is used. That is transient response. Again, you have to remember the basic thing. Before getting the steady state output, the condition of the system is known as transient state. Okay. So here undesirable means unexpected. That is more high values are present. If some... Um, <clears throat> undesirable values are present in, in a system then we are going to use a lead compensator no matter whether the system is stable or unstable right so the next thing is the transfer function of a lead compensator will have a zero and a pole you see here we are including both zero and pole so here the poles and zeros since they are used for compensation right we are including the term compensator the compensator pole and compensator zeros, they are placed on the real axis, right? So, real axis is they will be placed somewhere over here. The introduction of zero will amplify the noise which is eliminated by the compensating pole, okay? A zero will always introduce some noise but that noise is eliminated by this compensating pole. And the pole is located 3 to 10 times the value of the zero location. That is the distance between the pole and the zero is here considerable. Right. You see 3 to 10 times. For example, if you are having a zero here. Okay. Then zero at 1 centimeter distance. Then we will be having our pole at some 3 to 10. Either uh, it will be. 3 to 10 means here it, it will be placed at some 4 cm or more than that. Right. Then the next thing is lag compensator. So a lag compensator is used when the system has unsatisfactory error requirements. Right. Again error is in terms of steady state error. Right. So if we have unsatisfactory steady state error then a lag compensator is used. Here also the transfer function has both poles and Polar, pole and a zero. So, here they don't change the shape of the root locus, right? You see, they have negligible effect. Okay, they won't change the shape of the root locus. How this is done is, this is done by placing the pole and zero very close to each other, right? So, this type of positioning will increase the error constant which will reduce the steady state error. So, a lag compensator is introduced whenever there is a unsatisfactory or unacceptable values of error constants are there right or steady state error is there because steady state error and error constants you see they are inversely proportional to each other right so in this case again we are adding a pole and a zero and pole and zeros are placed very close to each other so when they are placed very close to each other what happens they will increase the error constant right whenever the error constants are increased then the steady state error will reduce right here lag compensator is mainly introduced to reduce the steady state error right then the finally we are going to discuss about lag lead compensator. So where lag lead compensator is used when both the transient and steady state characteristics are not satisfactory, right? Both the characteristics are not satisfactory means we have to go for lag lead compensator. So again, we all know, right? Lead compensator improves the transient response and lag compensator, this reduces the steady state error, right? That's all. Here comes the end of this video. This is a basic introduction about this uh, root locus. You will get more clear idea when we use it to solve problems. Right. Thank you.